In this activity, students will build transmitter and receiver circuits for their alarms on breadboards like this one. Breadboards are used by electrical engineers to prototype new circuits. In this case, the receiver circuit will have two LEDs on it that will be controlled by two different switches on the transmitter circuit. In this way, one wire will be used to send the signals from both triggers to our receiver. And this would allow us to use two different triggers with a single alarm receiver. For this activity, each group of students should be provided with the following. In the receiver bag, there should be one decoder chip with a silver dot, two LEDs, three two-inch jumper wires, one battery pack for three AA batteries, and one breadboard. In the transmitter bag, there should be one encoder chip with a gold dot, two switches, seven two-inch jumper wires, two resistors, one battery pack for three AA batteries, and one breadboard. You will need two long wires to connect the transmitter to the receiver. In a house, these would go from one room to another room. Breadboards are devices used by engineers to build and test circuits. There are a few things we need to know about breadboards before we can begin using them. All five holes in a single row are connected inside the breadboard. Opposite halves of the breadboard are not connected. These columns on either side of the breadboard are called power rails. Power rails are connected vertically. For our purposes, we will be using the negative blue rail on the right and the positive red rail on the left. So that a good connection is ensured, it is important that the wire ends are inserted straight into the holes on the breadboard. Begin building the receiver by inserting the decoder chip as a class. Place the chip across the middle of the breadboard. The notch on the chip should face the top of the breadboard. Bottom pins 4 and 5 should be in row 10. Instructions for this and for the rest of the wiring are provided in the youth handout. The following video shows the rest of the circuit being built. Also make sure that the negative end of the LED, the shorter side, is added to the power rail. After you finish building the receiver, build the transmitter and begin by making sure the encoder is added on the breadboard with the notch facing upward. When inserting the slide switches, make sure you know which pins each of the three terminals are entering. A resistor is an electrical component that resists the flow of electricity by converting some of that energy into heat. Each of the resistors is connected to the encoder and to one of the switches. Next, connect the transmitter and the receiver with the two long wires. Then connect the two battery packs to the transmitter and the receiver. We will now demonstrate the results. When we flip a switch, one of the LEDs should turn on. When we flip the other switch, the other LED should turn on. In concluding this activity, ask students how they might use the door trigger from the last activity and combine it with the transmitter and receiver circuits in this activity. The way it would work would be the transmitter would be in their room and collect information from multiple triggers. Perhaps one trigger on the door and another trigger on a lockbox of some kind. That transmitter 
would be connected via long wires that would run through the walls to a receiver, perhaps in the television room or in the kitchen. The student would then know if they were in the television room, if the lockbox had been opened, and if the door had been opened because of the two different lights. Thank you.